in the midst of a national reckoning on issues of racial injustice, our city council adopted a goal of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice. One significant way that our city can build understanding and awareness about the importance of inclusion is through celebrating the diversity of our community and providing opportunities for Milwaukee's black, indigenous, and people of color to see themselves in city work. This mural celebrates two momentous yet often overlooked pieces of Milwaukee's history. Ah Bing, cultivator of the Bing cherry, and Dorothy and Hurtis Hadley, owners and operators of the Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen, the first black-owned bakery in the state of Oregon. Ah Bing was a foreman who worked in Seth Llewellyn's orchards, managing more than 30 workers in the mid to late 1800s. As the story goes, one day Seth Llewellyn and Ah Bing were walking through the rows of cherry trees where each man maintained separate seedlings. In Ah Bing's row, Seth found that he had developed a new type of cherry. Someone suggested to Seth that he name the cherry after himself. However, Llewellyn declined. He said he would rather name it after Bing because it's a big cherry and Bing was a big man. While working in Milwaukee, Bing's wife and children remained in China. In 1889 or 1890, Bing traveled to China to see his family. However, he was never able to return to the United States due to the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act. We would not have this mural or this opportunity to build community without the Hadleys. Thank you for choosing Milwaukee many years ago to make it your home and for bringing your delicious pastries to our town. We're in an interesting moment in history and Something that art does is it, it takes us along with social change. It shows us potential. It shows us something to aspire to. It inspires us to maybe create ourselves. It's really neat to see so many folks come out to support a piece of artwork made by a local artist and celebrating some of Milwaukee's history. I love that Ah Bing is on there. Being a, a Japanese fella, it's really neat to see a Chinese fellow, a person of Asian descent, on a wall. That means, that means a lot to me. These folks are pioneers. And we certainly got a whole lot of pioneer spirit here in, in our community. I never thought a little black girl who survived Vanport flood in 1948 and grew up in the housing projects of Portland, Oregon, would be making history today. When Hurtis told me there was a bakery in Milwaukee, Oregon for sale, he said he wanted to buy a bus to run. I said, oh, no, no, there's cowboys and horses out there. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm a city girl. <laughs> we did buy Milwaukee Pastry Kitchen in 1977, become a Milwaukee, Oregon first black owned business. One day I received a call from a customer uh, from New York, and she said, I was in the bakery and I bought a banana whipped cream cake, and that was the best cake I've had. And she said, I live in New York, but my mother is in a care facility in Oregon City, and the previous owner used to bake a banana whipped cream cake for her every year and deliver it, and I wanted to know if you folks would continue to do that. Well, Hurtis would, would told her that he would do it, and he would put on a suit coat, a black top hat, deliver the cake to her, and he and he would he would sing. See, we don't sing, we sang. He would sing happy birthday to her every year. And that got to be so popular we called it Cake on Wheels. The, another incident that happened, some of you probably already heard it, some of you haven't, while we was at the bakery. Hurtis was accused of robbing a bank in Milwaukee, Oregon. He said, well, a man just robbed the bank and he looked just like your husband. And I, I thought to myself, how could that be? Uh, just because my husband's black, why would, why would he assume that he had robbed the bank? So when Hurtis returned, not for robbing the bank, but buying supplies <laughs> for the bakery, Hurtis, Hurtis said, I'm gonna go down and, and speak with him. He said to Hurtis, well, I made a mistake. So Hurtis and I said, well, I guess we all look alike. So the next day, 
He sent me a bouquet of roses, which I promptly threw in the trash. <laughs> we had a rug at the entrance of the bakery that read, put a little soul in your roll. It was kind of catchy. During Thanksgiving, though, Hearst baked pumpkin pies. But for those of you who don't know, we grew up on sweet potato pies. And so I had to go home after a 12-hour day and bake sweet potato pies for our dinners. So I said to her, I said, would you make me up some sweet potato pies and I'll sample them out. Oh, I was so glad I did that because that year we had more sweet potato pies than we did pumpkin pies. And I didn't have to make any more pies at home. In closing, I would especially like to thank Greg and Michelle from the, from the Milwaukee Oregon Museum. And uh, Kim, Kim, are you here? Uh, Kim is from the uh, Black Pioneers of Oregon. I'd like to thank them for their continued work in supporting Black American history and making sure it's being told. And before I forget, I don't see her here. Do you see her, Hurtis? Debbie, are you here? Debbie Virgil. No, I don't see her. Debbie, oh my God, I've been talking to you all day. When Debbie came to the bakery, her sister and her mother, they were teenagers. God, I must be old, Debbie. <laughs> they were the baker's helpers, the sales girls, the cleanup people. They started probably a month after we got there and stayed until the bakery was closed. Thank you guys so much for coming. This, this was something that we never really expected. <laughs> uh, actually, my career started in 1964 and 1965. I worked at the Bohemian Bakery, which was downtown on 13th and Washington. Working at the Bohemian for three years, the officer came to town and they were hiring. I finished up my apprenticeship, got to be a journeyman. 1971, I was offered a head baker's job on Barber Boulevard. So I became Oregon's first black baker in the, the Alverson organization. And then at that time, I was being groomed for a, a district manager. Well, when I got out there and worked a couple of years, then they changed their mind. They said, I w a black person wasn't, wouldn't be the proper move at this time. So that's when I left Elverson. So then I went to work for a couple of small independent bakeries. And while working at these independent bakeries, I, I met a salesperson. He came in and said there was a bakery available. I went out to Milwaukee and he introduced me to the the owner that owned the bakery, he said, with all your experience and potential, he said, you'll be fabulous here. Our family always had a round table. We'd sit down with the kids and we'd discuss family business, how they went to school and so on and so forth. So I told her, I said, we're going to have to make a commitment. Either I'm going to continue working for somebody or maybe we can work for ourselves. Well, everybody was for us, like Dorothy said. There'd be cowboys and Indians out there. <laughs> but I assured her that the, the owner of the bakery said that if we came out and bought the bakery, he would go around and PR for us and tell the community where it's coming and my expertise. Opening day, we opened up and we had customers around the block just like this. So I kind of get emotional when I see all the people coming out. But anyway, like I say, uh, we had seven great years there. Uh, I think we made a difference in Milwaukee, made a difference in my family. I just have to be able to be here and have this representation. Thank you so much for coming. When Jordan reached out to me about doing it back in January, which feels like a lifetime ago, he told me that the city wanted something that represented uh, Ah Bing and the cherry orchard history. So when this came around and I had the opportunity to do something so large, I also wanted to um, include the Hadleys in the painting to kind of uh, bridge the histories. Like uh, Ah Bing was in the 1880 or so. So I wanted something a little bit more contemporary and it made perfect sense to include the Hadleys in it. So when I proposed that to Jordan, he was all for it. In my bio, I, I, I speak about inclusion of African Americans in work. And the reason for doing that nowadays is, um, I have a kid now, I have a two year old, he's not here, I, he might be on his way. And I think about like little black kids 
seeing um, people that look like them in public places, places that they don't typically expect to see themselves, and how important that is for uh, self-confidence. With that, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, I guess we're going to unveil the mural. <laughs>